Hello and welcome to the free five day programme to reduce and eliminate your anxiety now. I'm Lisa Davies of Lisa Davies QP and I've been trained in hypnosis since 2011. However, there's no hypnosis scripts or tracks in this free five day programme so you can relax and feel in control. So today I'm going to give you quite a few activities and this is because you're going to be applying some of them daily. This might require a small investment of time and yet it will save you time worrying and feeling anxious. So this is a good investment for you. Remember that if you want to get rid of your anxiety now, it is your choice and you decide when to let go now. Before we get into the activities, I want you to measure what your activity levels are. Out of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst, rate your anxiety levels. I want you to rate it four times as follows. So what is your anxiety level when you wake in the morning? What is your anxiety level on average? What is your anxiety level now? And what is the worst anxiety level that you, you've experienced? For you to know that you have made progress, you need to know what you are measuring both in time and feelings. So this is really important that we get this measurement at the moment and then you're going to measure that later on towards the end of the week. So the first activity that we're going to do is to write a letter and we're going to be writing a letter to anxiety. So this might sound weird, but let me explain two major reasons for this. The first reason is you're going to communicate to the part of you that is running the anxiety. Your unconscious mind is what runs the body and will be the mind running the anxiety. Your conscious mind, your analytical mind, will be the reason you are here to help reduce and eliminate your anxiety now. The second reason is you are not your behaviour. Anxiety is something that you do, it is not who you are. So by writing a letter, we be, are able to create that kind of distinction. So the format of the letter is in the download that you'll have available and I'll run through it quickly here. And if you've got any questions, then I want you to kind of ask in the, in the group and do it under the hashtag ask me anything. So first off, we write dear anxiety. Now the first paragraph is going to be communicating to anxiety two things. One, what is it, it is preventing you from doing and being? And two, how anxiety is making you feel? So it, is it eliciting sadness, frustration, annoyed, trapped, unsure? These are emotions and states. So I want you to be able to un identify what that kind of does beyond the anxiety uh, feelings. So that, that, that should kind of help there. And then after that, you're going to write a paragraph describing how your life will look without anxiety. Now you can make this as long as you want and I, and I encourage you to write as much as you can about how your life will look and the different scenarios that you might have with that. So it could be, how does your life look around your family? How does your life look around uh, work? How does it look like when you go out or when you go to a restaurant or when you do a particular activity? So it'll be what are the things that you will do? What will your day look like? How will you wake up? What positive thoughts will you have? And how will other people see you? So the final paragraph is going to be about your decision. First, you want to thank the anxiety for its intentions to keep you safe and protected and to allow you to feel prepared. You know that there are other ways that your mind can do these things in a calm and graceful manner and that actions will be reasonable and relative for events and people around you. Then write, I have decided that I no longer want you, comma, anxiety, comma, in my life and I set you free. And then when you sign the letter off with love and your name. 
So hopefully that explains uh, the letter portion and later I'll give you some options as to what you can do with that letter. Now, if there's anything about that you feel you're not sure about, just have an initial go um, and if you want to type it on a computer, you can do that. Handwritten letter is, is much more um, powerful because of the kines kinesthetic connection that you've got there. But if you're not sure how to phrase this just right, then you can, of course, uh, write it out on uh, in a word processor. So after I've explained the next few activities, I'll give you the options of what you can do with the letter. There are going to be some interesting things. And then also the download that's going to be available will also show you the adjustments that you can make for if, if you're in this group for insomnia or PTSD. The next activity for today is to set a new habit. Now, you may already be doing this in some form or you may be introducing something now or re-establishing something you did very many years ago. You are going to do a daily walk. Now, you may find it difficult to imagine doing this every day with the other things you have going on. Yet prioritising this one activity is how you let your unconscious mind know that you are in the driving seat. I recommend that you walk for 30 minutes each day and that 30 minutes is the minimum. If you're in a place where anxiety is high when you leave the house or go for a short walk, then I want you to think about doing this in baby steps and start with five minutes. And if that is actually too much, then start with two minutes and then you can build up. And what you're going to do is build up a minute or two each day. Make sure that the root is safe and keep the root the same, at least in the beginning. I'm going to share with you why it's important and it's more than the reasons that you think it is. So yes, Walking does get our blood pumping around the body and we can use up some of the adrenaline that anxiety can produce. Yet what is really special about walking is what happens with our movements and how that affects our amygdala. As part of our evolutionary journey, we have been rewarded for making progress. The way the brain does this is as we move forward, our eyes move from side to side. It's kind of a micro movement that happens. It's a minute movement that occurs as we walk and it quietens down and shuts down the amygdala. And it's the amygdala that is often responsible for the responses that we have in the, in the body for anxiety. So the more that we can quieten and suppress our amygdala naturally, the less anxiety that you will experience. Not only do you experience less anxiety whilst you're on your walk, you will also benefit for the rest of the day and over time the amygdala will quieten more and more. There's even evidence to suggest that our amygdala in an anxious state can get larger and when we do things that quieten down the amygdala we can actually make that amygdala smaller and smaller. So the next activity for today is to design your Ten Commandments. There are three elements to these Ten Commandments and I'm going to show you mine so you can get an idea of what I'm kind of referring to and why these are really important foundations. And you're going to find the commandments and words that fit your worldview. So my Ten Commandments start with each commandment and its number have meaning. That help me in my life on the basis on the basis I stick with them. My commandments I have designed around the laws of nature and you can choose any basis or none at all yet it makes sense to you. So I'm going to run through what my 10 commandments are. In the download it's going to be available how I describe them a lot more their particular meaning because this is what's specific and unique to me um, it's unique to my innovation work and how I sort of bind that all together. But you'll be able to understand the fabric of what these Ten Commandments are so that you can design them for yourself as well. So one is number one is look after number one. And I think that's fairly self-explanatory. It's a bit like the oxygen mask principle. Um, and in the download, I do explain uh, a bit more about uh, the importance of uh, number one. Two is a solid two. 
And so the way that I might apply this in my particular life is if I've got two of something, then that will make me feel more sure about something. Um, so uh, it could be, um, you know, some somebody has complimented me twice, therefore they really do mean it and it's compounded what they've actually said. Equally, I use it the other way to kind of assess whether something's a problem. So if something just happens as a one-off, I kind of let that um, lie and I don't have too much alert about that. If it happens twice, then I take a bit more notice about that. Um, so it allows me to understand, is this something to be concerned about? Number three is the power of three. Um, and it's the way that I might communicate with other people uh, to make sure that I feel heard. Um, it's also being able to have that succession of doing something. Um, and we kind of know that three is, is a powerful kind of force. Uh, we've got the three musketeers um, and you've got things like Tony Blair and his speech, uh, manifesto speech saying education, education, education. Um, so it's that repetitive nature, uh, you know, when we do it three times, that's important. And you'll you'll see this also in these tasks. So when we do things like once you've had your third walk, it will help you get into that habit of having a daily walk. My number four is be square. So for me, this is about fairness. I like to think that I'm a fair individual. If I've had experiences in my life that I feel are unfair or unjust or somebody has done something or said something, then I look at ways that I can square that off in my mind, mentally, um, but also I may take certain actions as well. Five um, is success is inevitable. I take the view that as long as I build up these foundations, then I, it's inevitable that I will have success, that I am successful as an individual, and the people that are around me are successful as well. Number six is stronger together. And by now, you'll start to see a bit of a pattern in how I'm framing my particular commandments. So mine are quite short and concise. You, yours don't have to be. They could be a little bit more wordy as long as they have particular meaning for you. The numbers might mean something for you or it might be just the priority order that you're putting your commandments in. So for me, I have four children and so that makes us a family of six and that comes with challenges. However, no, I know that we are stronger together and that we can work as a team. So I look at number six as being very team orientated. And with six being the double of three, I also look at how powerful that is, double the amount of power. So number seven is triple win. So this is me just looking at numbers or just looking at things that happen, the number of times that they happen, the frequency that they happen um, allows me to see things in a positive way. And so once we get to six, we've got a lot of momentum, a lot of energy, we've got the team spirit, therefore number seven is about triple win. So that means more than two parties benefit from any of the action or transaction or a trade or a commercial agreement or you know, kindness that kind of happens as well. Number eight is mirror, mirror. And for me, I wanted a commandment that reminded me that what we see and experience in life can be a reflection of ourselves. So, um, you know, again, it's kind of looking at what the number eight is and the shape of number eight. So that was important to me. Um, but you might have lucky numbers or something, or you might have numbers that are associated with uh, certain people and therefore they hold an important thing to you and they hold access to resources for you as well. Um, but for me, uh, number eight is mirror, mirror. And so when I look at and see a mirror that happens in my life, I will be able to acknowledge that, but also realise that that's quite advanced thinking, being at number eight out of my 10 commandments, and that will help me and resource me to be able to deal with that and navigate that particular mirror. Number nine is exponential growth. And again, it's to do with the shape of that particular number um, and very much around the golden ratio. And it's like the flower opening up. Um, so this is about me seeing that things can go on and on and get better and get better and better. And number 10 
um, is basically taking uh, the one and the zero and, and turning it into a bit of a game. But basically it's one nil to love. And so for me, it was really important to have love in my Ten Commandments to be able to look at life and know that, you know, eventually things work out and, you know, love is the answer and love will be able to um, come through any of the experiences um, that might be more challenging. And then what I've gone and done with my Ten Commandments is I have one word that defines that particular thinking. So this could be really helpful to, you know, both have your, your Ten Commandments, but also have sort of ten words that you can focus on that can be really positive and they're grounding for you and they're your foundational blocks. And the one word aspect is actually something new that I've introduced and I've had the time over many months and years to think about what I want to create my 10 words and prioritise them. What you can do is you might want to think about 10 words that are really important to you, that resonate for you, um, that speak to you at some level. And then you might want to you know, prioritise them and then work backwards and create your 10 commandments uh, from then. So find which way works for you. Um, or do a mix of both that would that would be really good so since my uh, commandments follow the laws of nature I probably had these words in mind in the first place so like life from water and exponential growth from flower where the golden ratio can be found so just to quickly run through what my words are number one so my commandment is look after number one and my word is life Two is a solid two and my word is couple. Number three is power of three and my word is win. Number four is B square and my word is shape. Number five is success is inevitable and my word is embrace. Number six, stronger together and my word is govern. Number seven is triple wind, triple win. <laughs> It's because I'm putting the D on from my word. And my word is expand. Um, number eight is mirror, mirror. And my word is oscillate. Number nine is exponential growth. And my word is flower, which I've alluded to. And the same with number 10. 10 is one nil to love. And my word is love. So hopefully from that, you can get a feel for what what the commandments are and how they would be able to help you if they're things that you can focus on on a, a daily basis and then if you want to you can write this out and put it up on your wall or have it on um, your laptop or on your phone or something like that so that you can reference it certainly in the beginning I, I used to do this I used to reference this quite regularly um, and you know it took a little bit of time for me to <coughs> work through what all of my 10 commandments are because 10 is quite a lot uh, to have but then it's a really good basis uh, to be able to build your life from so you might think this is all a bit weird uh, but once you've written them down you kind of realize that they are your rules for life and they'll be something meaningful to you and they'll reflect your life experiences as well your values and they will be your building blocks as i said before so for example I know I am okay because I have two dependable people in my life. So your words and focus could be knowledge or relationships or support. You will have words and sayings that are important to you. So when you build your Ten Commandments, remember to make sure that these are positive statements and that you can rely on them. For example, the magpie saying doesn't start too well with one for sorrow. So even though the rest that follow are fairly constructive, so keep to positive states, words and constructs, so you have strong foundations. If you feel comfortable, share your 10 commandments in the group because this will really inspire other people um, and it would be lovely to see what it is that, you, that you're looking to build um, your life from the foundations. Now, that's three activities and I know that sounds like an awful lot. Um, I want you to take this at your own pace, okay? Um, and you can 
I'll set down a, a little bit in the video uh, what the priorities are as well. So now this last activity that I'm going to give you doesn't necessarily have to be done today and you might not have access to it, but I would like you to do it as part of this uh, program and for you to know that it's something that you should schedule to do. So this is about watching a film. So I'm recommending a particular film um, because of what the film is, um, but I want you to judge whether it's going to be a good film for you to watch. So I think this film is very funny um, and it has a lot of good points and it's related to anxiety. But if you are someone that struggles to watch films where they trigger thoughts and fears, then this might not be the film to watch. The best way I can help you gauge whether to watch this film is to ask yourself whether you're able to watch a Clint Eastwood movie or um, a, a kind of Western, one of the old Westerns with the the gunshots and stuff like that. If you can watch those without anxiety rising then I think you can actually watch this film but remember I want you to be your own guide. So this film now is called High Anxiety. So if you've already seen it before then I would love for you to say in the group you know I've seen High Anxiety before um, tell me what you thought about it and then if you want to watch it again I, I encourage you to watch it again. I think it's um, it does compound some of the important messages that are in there. Um, in this film, there's a great song as well, which I find uh, helpful, and it will give you a positive anchor for any anxiety you might experience in the future. You can think of this song and relate to the notes and pitch. And the film itself allows you to see anxiety in a new and, I hope, funny way. So... If you weren't able to see that particular film, if you feel that that might trigger things, then what I want you to do is pick a funny film, one that you know that is funny, and watch that. So that sounds like a lot to do, but we're really going to go in with, you know, tackling uh, anxiety and, and working with it and working to reduce and, and eliminate anxiety now. But of course, I want this to be something that you do at your own pace, something that is manageable for you. So I'm prioritising what these activities are. And today I've, I've put them in the order as they are. So number one, the highest priority is to write that dear anxiety letter. Number two is to create the habit of a daily walk. As I mentioned before, the importance of what that does um, for our eye movements and how that quiets down the amygdala is really important and will go a long way into reducing on a daily basis what your anxiety levels are. Number three is create your 10 commandments. Um, of course, you might want to do this with your partner or with a friend and make it sort of something fun and a game that you do. So you might want to spread that over um, a period of time, but get some initial thoughts down there first if you can. And that's a good idea if you can do that today. And sometimes the first words that come to mind are the right ones. So even if I just, you know, just that I don't know how to do that, just jot down 10 words that are kind of important to you. Um, and then your mind will be able to formulate them over the coming days and weeks. And then number four is watch high anxiety. So I hope that by the end of the week, um, we've got people in the group that have watched the film and share their thoughts on, on that particular film. So if you are unable to watch high anxiety, I also want you to have a look at a funny film, but it would be probably good to watch something that you've watched quite a few times before. So you know that it's going to be funny or something that has been rec recommended to you. So I want you to be in that position where essentially you get to be able to laugh and you get to be able to enjoy the particular film in, in a particular state. It's an emotional state that I want you to be experiencing. So that's the activities for today. If you've got any questions on, on those particular activities, then write them in the group. Ask me anything um, if you want to clarify anything. And then if you've got any questions about anxiety um, or hypnosis, then please, again, also ask those. And I'll be answering those in the Q&A that I will be doing later today. I'll put in a scheduled time um, for when that will be. I haven't 
that's not been set yet. Um, and then you'll be able to watch back the Q&A and get the answers to your questions. Of course, you can ask me, you know, anything on hypnosis or anything related to anxiety or insomnia or PTSD um, or other areas that you, you might be in here for or you know a friend or somebody that is experiencing something, you can of course ask those questions there. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow uh, for day two and uh, I'll see you on the live Q&A later today. Bye for now.